Thanks for joining us once again for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Uh, no warnings, watches, or advisories around the state uh, again for tonight or tomorrow for uh, weather or any of the streams or rivers. Uh, so we'll just go right to the fire danger chart. About the same as it's been here. Uh, a little different, not much, uh, maybe smaller area of the extreme fire danger Copper River Basin, but still there. Uh, a lot of clouds over the area today, and then still kind of high there over areas in the northern panhandle here. Uh, Juneau, 70 degrees this afternoon, but really not all that big of a factor. And then really north of the Alaska Range, it still is where the areas of uh, extreme fire danger are in the uh, mid Tanana Valley there and also up over the Yukon Flats, pretty wide area of extreme fire danger. High fire danger not quite extending back as far west as it did yesterday, but uh, definitely getting into the Koyukuk Valley and southward into and around Tanana. Western part of the state looking pretty good in southwest, Kuskokwim Valley fire danger pretty slack, if any, uh, really, and also of course the north slope of the Arctic coast. <clears throat> And moving on to the satellite imagery, we've got uh, low pressure here drifting northward. Actually, the upper level low, the main center, is still down to the south, but the whole system is coming to the north. Looks like one surface low pulled up and then dissipated. Band of clouds and rain extending northeastward from that circulation uh, here with another surge coming up the frontal boundary, coming northward on the frontal boundary into uh, southern Alaska here, south central Alaska, that bringing some uh, rain, of course, mostly along the coast, about a third of an inch falling today along the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula with uh, lighter amounts off to the east, about five hundredths over at Cordova, and then it cuts off roughly Cape Yakutaga and rain spreading northward to the Alaska Range, about a tenth of an inch in the Susitna Valley, but up toward the uh, slopes of the Alaska Range, probably uh, a little bit more than that with the upslope enhancement. Downslope enhancement resilient clearing on the north side of the mountains there. Uh, mid Tana Valley on down into uh, the 40 mile country or Northway Toke, parts of the Copper River Basin looking pretty good. Southeast coast dry under the influence of high pressure. And then this uh, first batch of moisture brought uh, areas of showers and some light rain to the uh, northeast interior, not very much at all. And thunderstorms firing up along this band of clouds. And, Generally just cloudy up there along the Arctic coast. I uh, didn't see any reports of rain uh, at 3 o'clock in any of the reporting stations, but New Exit did show seven hundredths of an inch falling uh, during the day today. And some clouds back in the northwest here. It looks like uh, possible sunshine breaking out over the Seward Peninsula back to the west. A pretty uh, sharp looking frontal boundary coming in or pushing in toward the central Bering Sea. That bringing some rain and gusty winds with it. Gusts about 35 miles an hour as it passed across uh, the Shimia 2 area with uh, rain, light rain with a impulse ahead of the front here, pushing into the central Aleutian, some light rain fog around Adak and Atka, but amounts were very light, I think only three, four hundredths of an inch, and about a quarter of an inch falling along the Alaska Peninsula associated with this uh, weakening system, just 1,014 millibars, and uh, no wind at all with that, just that moist flow coming northward here off the Pacific, and again, about a quarter of an inch of rain falling with that up to roughly Kodiak Island had the same amount today. And then mostly cloudy, scattered showers back to the southwest or uh, just mostly cloudy skies over the southwest interior. And thunderstorms developing here just east of the uh, Seward Peninsula, northeastward there across the uh, Koyukuk Valley into the Brooks Range, uh, tapering off to showers. But Everything's shifting northeastward, so those thunderstorms will probably be taking off to the northeast here this evening a little bit there. But uh, a place like Koyukuk uh, picked up a quarter of an inch of rain during the day today with uh, showers and thunderstorms in that area. Otherwise, not much at all occurring 
uh, definitely none occurring over the southeast coast. Moving on to tonight, uh, could see a chance of drizzle on the north coast, maybe like Elfin Cove, with increasing low clouds and fog along the coastline, pushing eastward or pushing inland here uh, once again over the inside waters as that uh, frontal boundary weakens into a, a trough and approaches a coastline. I don't think any precipitation associated with that feature will make it on shore tonight. Otherwise, uh, continued leftover moisture, weak southerly flow here coming up over this uh, ridge off to the southeast, coming on the western side of that, then taking a turn to the northeast. That's going to keep it uh, cloudy with occasional light rain. Again, southern Kenai Peninsula into Prince William Sound, maybe a little bit more in the way of rainfall occurring for Valdez and Cordova. And some of that moisture possibly could slip on up into the Copper River Basin for an increase in the clouds and also maybe a little bit better chance of shower conditions up over the Alaska Range and also over toward, uh, say, McCarthy. But uh, whatever falls won't amount to much at all. And then a trough back here to the west will keep a chance of rain into the Cusco Mountains, maybe the Cusco Valley areas, kind of uh, mostly cloudy and showery here along the southwest coast. Uh, not too bad, maybe some breaks over the Yukon Delta, dry for the Seward Peninsula eastward there to the upper Yukon Valley, uh, continued dry. And then those thunderstorms dissipating, moving northeastward this evening toward the, uh, or into the Koyukuk Valley and up toward the uh, East Central Brooks Range. And then this trough will keep a chance of light rain, fog, and drizzle going on the central and eastern Arctic coast. Otherwise, uh, this front slowly moving now, but kind of diving southeast where the low center forms uh, west of the Pribilofs there. So rain pushing across to the front, Adak and Atka overnight tonight will push eastward here, possibly reaching Nikolsky late tonight with a lot of low clouds, showers, fog, and drizzle following in behind there with uh, west winds of anywhere from 15 to maybe 25 miles an hour at the most. And then for tomorrow, you can see the front doesn't really move much and actually weakens, but that's going to leave a band of light rain right across the Unalaska to Nikolsky Dutch Harbor area, maybe staying west of the Pribilofs. You'll have a chance of rain, but it won't be, it's just a chance and it'll be light, or you may escape it altogether, but it will be cloudy. And then other trough swinging across the Aleutians, that'll keep uh, rain at times here. Another batch of rain will be pushing eastward. But it looks like the bulk of the moisture, definitely the strongest winds, will stay south of the Aleutians. But still it'll be a cloudy, showery day tomorrow for the uh, central areas. Isolated thunderstorms developing along the Alaska Range and the band of showers here through the central interior, really from the Brooks Range coming southward. Showers chances anywhere along the Bristol Bay southwest coast in the Yukon Delta and uh, Arctic coastal risk of some fog, low clouds, drizzle and showers there with the uh, looks like maybe some sun breaking out over the eastern Tana Valley. Uh, that'll help to allow temperatures to push up back toward 80 degrees tomorrow afternoon, which uh, actually may be a little bit more clearing than what I'm showing depicting on the chart here. And then that'll help trigger those afternoon thunderstorms. Should be a mostly sunny day for the panhandle after the morning low clouds and fog uh, dissipate. And then rain streaming northward, possibly reaching southern Kodiak Island uh, ahead of the next system. It's well down to the south, but we'll see that moves north. So it will rain in Kodiak tomorrow night. And then that moisture slips off to the northeast on Saturday with the entire low center dissipating, troughing out. But uh, the slug of moisture will keep it wet from Kodiak up to the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, maybe a few hundreds reaching Cordova. Uh, rainfall will be light with this system, and there's a chance of rain over southern Cook Inlet, Aldovia, Homer, possibly up to Kenai, otherwise uh, from roughly Kenai northward into Anchorage, just uh, mostly cloudy skies and staying dry, mostly sunny here. Central interior areas, Tanau Valley, uh, all the way over to uh, possibly into the Northeast Copper River Basin, and then look for along and north of this trough, some shower and thunderstorm activity will be developing there across a Brooks Range. While the Arctic coast stays in that uh, chance of rain or drizzle category with patchy areas of fog. Otherwise, uh, another nice day there for the southeast coast. Again, after the morning, low clouds and fog burn off along the coast and over the inside waters. Back to the west, large low pressure area here just south of Atka Island. That's going to dominate the entire Bering Sea, and uh, that'll be sending surges of moisture, so periods of rain and showers to the Alaska Peninsula. Could be a little breezy, cold bay, possibly seeing gusts 25 miles an hour. 
especially along this trough as it rotates past the Pribilovs, could see a little bit of an increase in the wind along with some rain and fog, and then that'll diminish once it passes by in the afternoon. Otherwise, just lots of IFR, lots of clouds, low clouds, fog, drizzle, light rain, showers, and uh, not much of any in the way of any sunshine here for the uh, areas from the Bering Strait southward to the Aleutians. And from there, we'll go to uh, temperatures, forecast lows tonight, 55 to 60 or so here up over the, uh, well, from Tanah Valley all the way up to the southern slopes of the Brooks Range with uh, mid-50s extending back to the west, or in some cases upper 50s, or 57 at Kotzebue forecast low. Contrast with 37 at Barrow and 36 for the low at Kaktovik, 45 St. Lawrence Island, about the same for the Perbolofs, near 50 along the Aleutians. Uh, to the Alaska Peninsula, lower 50s Bristol Bay, mid upper 50s to the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, back into the uh, upper 60s, lower maybe mid 70s, warm and down south over the Panhandle, still reaching 70 at Skagway, and 75 to 80, 81, 82 possibly here over the eastern interior, uh, from Eagle up to maybe Chilitz, Chakitsik picking up or topping the 80 degree mark, maybe. Mid 40s there around Point Barrow with just 38 is all the forecast high for Dead Horse. And, but you can see the lower 70s come all the way back toward the Selawick Valley and 60s here in the southwest and the usual 50s out over the Bering Sea and the Aleutians with 40s for the Seward Peninsula. Or I'm sorry, the St. Lawrence Island area. Seward Peninsula for the lows will be, looks like the lower 50s. Otherwise about the same here for the eastern interior areas with uh, mid to upper 50s, 50 to 55 southern Alaska and uh, 50s for the Panhandle, upper 40s in the Aleutians. Highs for Saturday afternoon, looking really nice again. Central Eastern Interior will see the warmest conditions with highs reaching 75 to 80, back into the 70s across the southeast coast. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First flying weather graphic shows for Friday morning. Nothing but IFR out over the Aleutians and Bering Sea, right up through the strait, and then up and over, and then along the eastern Beaufort Sea coast. Uh, a lot of VFR over the interior, except some lower conditions along the Brooks Range. IFR extending from uh, Togiak Bay in the southwest mountains there, right into the Alaska Range, and then up along and south of areas of the central Alaska Range, back into the widespread IFR, Gulf of Alaska from Prince William Sound, right in across the northern panhandle with VFR conditions down to the south. Afternoon tomorrow, uh, improving there for the panhandle, uh, staying low along the coast, though IFR hanging in from Yakutat along the North Gulf Coast, Kenai Peninsula. A little bit less than that along the Alaska Range. Uh, good VFR in the interior, some marginal hanging tough over the central Brooks Range, mostly on the southern slopes and areas. Otherwise, VFR and North Slope right on out to the coastline. No change out west, and no change out west for Saturday morning as well. Nothing but IFR here for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians up across St. Lawrence Island in the Strait. But uh, it may catch Point Hope and Cape Lisbon, but the rest of the Arctic coast, North Slope, look really good. Uh, lower conditions along the Brooks Range there, mostly central and east side. Good VFR in the interior, which includes Norton Sound, Cotsview, and uh, the Seward Peninsula eastward there. Across 40 mile country, IFR a little more extensive now again along the Alaska Range. Also widespread Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak eastward to uh, right up along the coastline of the Panhandle. And by afternoon, again, burns back to along and actually a little farther off the coast Saturday afternoon than it does tomorrow afternoon there. So looking pretty good for the southeast coast on Saturday, first day of the weekend. Not too bad up over the central interior as well. But uh, Looks like Marshall VFR now from the Brooks Range on out to the Arctic coast with uh, some areas out there getting some IFR in the afternoon. No change in the Bering Sea, maybe a little bit of a breakout here north side of the Alaska Peninsula, Fox Islands to marginal VFR. VFR breaking out over western Bristol Bay, marginal southwest interior. Passes shaping up like this for tomorrow. VFR be, uh, actually kind of bouncing back and forth between VFR and marginal, right on the edge there for Anatovic and Adigan passes both. Uh, occasionally marginal would be a good way to say it. Lake Clark and Merrill, IFR, trending up toward VFR into the afternoon. And rainy, same trend, IFR becoming marginal. And windy, occasionally marginal, mostly south, southern entrance. Isabel, marginal VFR, and Mentasta looks really nice. VFR will be some clouds around though. 
And for Tanita, VFR looks like uh, it will become marginal VFR in the afternoon, possibly. And for IF, or for Portage, starting out IFR, then look for an uh, improving trend, hopefully, throughout the day. And for Chilkoot and White, IFR becoming VFR, uh, probably by late morning. Freezing levels, uh, kind of a cool pool here, but still about 8,000 feet, so not uh, really that cool over the Bristol Bay area, Kodiak Island, Southwest Interior. 10,000 over the, uh, mainly the central uh, interior here, then back down toward 8,000 on the Arctic coast. Really warm air aloft out over the western Aleutians, Southwest Bering Sea at 14,000 feet. And uh, no significant icing below 9,000 feet here with those high freezing levels. And moving on to the winds aloft chart, uh, southerly flow here, have this upper level low slowly tracking northward, crossing the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow morning. About this position tomorrow afternoon, back to the west, uh, 80 knot wind flow at 33,000 feet coming uh, across the southwest bearing there over the top of that upper level ridge and then diving down to the south, return flow south to North Point. Moisture clouds right up to the eastern North Gulf Coast and across Yakutat, ridging over the panel, keeping it dry. 9,000 feet uh, south to southeast winds here, 20 to 25, another wave uh, farther to the south will be rolling up, but pretty light over the central interior, westerly 25, eastern Brooks Range, maybe 20 to 25 southwest coast, 20 to 30 along the Aleutians, and 10 to 20 out of the west-northwest for the pan, and a really light southeast interior all the way up to the Arctic coast, and uh, kind of 20 knot winds here for Bristol Bay and Nunavak Island, 20 to 25 there along the Aleutians. Turbulence-wise, uh, from the Alaska Peninsula all the way out to Sam Chitka, okay, light to isolated moderate chop at times in areas here below 4,000 feet. Maybe possible turbulence up there along the Arctic coast and then along the coast range here into the northern panhandle, more of a mechanical type turbulence. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. for every season. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. You know, we can see some stars and constellations all year round, like the Big Dipper and Cassiopeia, while others are only visible during certain seasons, like Scorpius and the Summer Triangle. Why is this? Let's show you the difference between circumpolar and seasonal stars. Okay, we have our skies set up for any night this week facing north at 10.30 p.m. First, find the Big Dipper standing on its spoon high in the northwestern sky. These seven stars also mark the rear end and tail of Ursa Major, the Big Bear. We can use the two stars on the end of the spoon to point us to Polaris, a.k.a. the North Star. Polaris marks the end of the tail of the little bear, Ursa Minor. Or the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. Now, if you continue that line from the Big Dipper's handle through Polaris, you reach a constellation that looks like the letter W. This is the beautiful Cassiopeia the Queen sitting on her throne. These three constellations, Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Cassiopeia, are visible in the sky nearly every night of the year. The reason why is that, well, as the night rolls on, the stars will appear to rotate around a pivot point near Polaris. This motion in the heavens is actually caused by the rotation of the Earth. Our daily spin causes stars to rise in the east and set in the west. But in the north, we can watch the stars spin a full 360 degrees without going below the horizon. That makes them circumpolar stars. Oh, wow. Okay, this is making me a little dizzy. Stay focused, Dean. Yes, and when you look at stars farther from Polaris, they seem to make bigger circles in the sky. So the farther south you look, the less each constellation is above the horizon. As the Earth orbits the sun, our perspective on the distant stars changes. When we're on one side of the sun, like in winter, we can more easily see constellations like Orion and Gemini at night. But when we're on the other side of the sun, like in summer, we can't see Orion and Gemini as well because the glare of the sun is in the way. Those constellations are only above the horizon during the daytime. 
In summer, when the nighttime part of the Earth is pointed that way, then we can better see star patterns like Scorpius and the Summer Triangle. So all these are seasonal constellations. But no matter what season it is, we always have a good view to the northern sky. So we in the northern hemisphere can view Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Cassiopeia all year long. That makes them circumpolar constellations. So now that we're in summer, let's check out the Summer Triangle. Look high in the east and you'll find its three bright stars. We can see the brightest star, Vega, is at the top, bright white Altair is to the right, and dimmer Deneb is to the left. Vega is the brightest star in the constellation Lyra the Harp. Altair is the eagle eye of Aquila the Eagle, and Deneb is the tail of Cygnus the Swan. Three great summer constellations in one big triangle. Another easy to find summer constellation is low in the southern sky. There's Scorpius the Scorpion. You won't need to strain your imagination to see a scorpion in the long fish hook of stars that make his tail and stinger. The brightest star in Scorpius is a beautiful red star named Antares. Antares means rival of Mars because its color is similar to that of the red planet. A string of fainter night lights curl just above the horizon and end at the Scorpion's stinger stars, Shaula and Lasath. You can see the stars of the Scorpion every summer evening. So get outside tonight and see how the stars move over the night. It may take a few hours, or days, but you'll notice the difference between the circumpolar and seasonal constellations. Say hi to our old friends Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, and Cassiopeia, and then you can celebrate summer by spotting the Summer Triangle and the Scorpion. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's CS analysis, not a lot changed from what we've seen here for the last several days. Uh, continuing to thin out here along the uh, coastline there. Otherwise, not a whole lot of change except back up here in the northeast there, continuing to dissipate as well. And really about the same pattern expected for the next four or five days. Coastal water forecast, small craft advisories on the south coast. Tomorrow, northwest 25 with seas as high as 7 feet. Uh, lighter winds and more westerly on the north coast. Lynn Canal, south at 20, 4-foot seas. Northwest 15, Stevens Passage, pick up to 20 knots or Clarence Strait with seas running 3 to 4 feet. Outlook for the uh, following day here on the north coast, uh, west to northwest 15 to 20. Still, small craft advisories there for Saturday on the south coast. Lynn Canal, south 20, northwest 10 for Stevens Passage and 20 knots for Clarence Strait. Prince William Sound, light southeasterlies tomorrow are variable at 10 knots, 2 foot seas. Southwest 15 for the North Gulf Coast, seas at about 5 feet. And for Cook Inlet, southerly winds 15 to 20 knots, strongest south of the Foreland, southeast 20 Kamishak Bay. And those seas at about 6 feet and roughly the same condition for the Barren Islands. And then on Saturday, we'll throw some small craft advisories in for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay for winds out of the east, 25, 4 to 6 foot seas, northeast, 50, northeast 20, south of the Forelands and Cook Inlet, uh, north side, northeast 15. Still light winds for Prince William Sound and southeast 15 for the eastern North Gulf Coast, picking up to 20 farther to the west. And for Kodiak Island, south to southeast winds, 15 knots, about sums it up there. Sitkanak to uh, Cape Sarachev, south, 20 knots. Seas running six feet at the most. And the north side, south 15 with three foot seas. Bristol Bay, southeast at 20, seas four feet. And then a little bit of an increase in the winds here, 20 to 25 out of the southeast for the uh, peninsula there, with seas as high as eight feet in the Pacific side, east 20, Bristol Bay, and from uh, Castle Cape to Cape, or I'm sorry, from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, south winds 20 knots with 7 foot seas, east 20 for Shelikoff Strait, rather light, the east side of Kodiak. Western Aleutians tomorrow, small craft advisories, west southwesterly is 25, seas 9 feet out that way, Adak and Atka, lighter, 15 to 20 out of the west, and then back up with the remnants of that front, uh, 20 to 25 knots here for the Fox Islands, with the highest winds and seas 
on the Pacific side of the islands. And then those will lighten up a little bit uh, on Saturday with uh, 10 to 15 there near Nikolsky on Alaska Island, southeast 25 to 6 foot seas. And uh, pretty light easterlies here for the central Aleutians, variable to east 10 to 15. And light northerlies on the western Aleutian chain there with uh, speeds at about 15 knots with those seas still up around 8 feet out to the west. And for the southwest coast, we've got southeast winds here. East southeasterlies at 20 tomorrow. Purple off southeast 15 and 20 knots out of the southeast for St. Matthew Island. St. Uh, St. Lawrence Island southeast at 15. Nor uh, Norton Sound south at 10. And then those will uh, pick up a little bit to about 15 knots there for the sound. Otherwise, St. Lawrence Island east 20 knots. Small craft advisories here on the southwest coast and St. Matthew Island all at 25 knots there and east winds at about 20 for the Perbaloffs. Up to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast, east northeast at about 10, and that's it. East 15 on the central coast, sees three feet there in the open water areas. East 15, west side, and from Wales all the way up to Cape Beaufort, south winds 15 knots, four foot seas. And the outlook for Saturday, east 15 here on the eastern coastline, turns southeast on the central coast, southerlies here at 15 knots for the west Western coast there all the way down to Cape Thompson and from Cape Thompson to the Bering Strait, suddenly at about 10. For tonight again, up along the Arctic coast, chance of rain, especially the central and east side, rain, fog, drizzle, uh, that sort of pattern, whatever falls will be light, dissipating thunderstorms, drifting off to the northeast to the uh, northern Koyukuk Valley and then up to the uh, Brooks Range. Another trough right through here, actually the remnants of the low pressure center right here with a trough keeping it damp over the Alaska Peninsula. Weakening system pushing in toward the panhandle, keep some moisture up along the North Gulf Coast and that front pushing rain and breezy winds. Again, some may seen small craft advisories with it into tomorrow, especially for Alaska Island, periods of rain, hopefully staying west of the Perloffs, but may sneak in there. Another trough brings uh, rain into the central Aleutians. Otherwise, uh, thunderstorms now looks like mostly over the eastern interior between the mountain ranges, as in Alaska and Brooks range, and the next day a little dry in the interior. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>